Hi! In this video, I will show the plot of the game Legend of Ogre Battle Gaiden, Prince of Zenobia. This game has the particularity of not having been brought to the West, so as it is only available in the Japanese language, some details of the story may have some mistakes. A lot is officially vague and left to interpretation, so I made the script more simplified for understanding. Information from the path that leads to the neutral lawful ending will be used, which I think best fits the events that continue the story afterwards. This game was created to show the past of Prince Tristan, just as the Knight of Lodi's game was created to show the past of the Knight Lancelot Tartar. The events will be presented chronologically and focused on the main events for the main plot of this specific game. I hope you like it. War on the Continent The Fall of Zenobia This story will start with the four great kingdoms at war against the sacred Zydogenian Empire that began to advance across the continent. If you want to know what the empire is and how it got to this point, I'll leave the video on the card above that explains the whole situation in detail. King Grand Zenobia of the Kingdom of Zenobia and his family were in their castle while the conflicts took place. The royal family consisted of King Grand, his wife Queen Florin, and their two newborn children Tristan and Jan. One of Zenobia's knights sneaks into the castle and assassinates the king, which starts an invasion of the region by enemy troops. The traitor also manages to kill Jan and kidnaps Queen Florin. Banya, the wet nurse of the royal family, was with Tristan at this time and decides to try to escape the castle to protect him. On the way she asks for help from one of Zenobia's knights, Estrada, who helps escort her out of there. Seeing the castle being taken over by the forces of the Empire, they decide to flee to the countryside, to a remote village called Esteir where they would not be found easily. Arriving at the village, Banya gives the child to the knight, asking not to tell anyone, not even Tristan, his true origins as the Empire's army would surely be looking for him. Estrada was supposed to raise and train him so that, at some point in the future, he could defeat the Empire, reclaim Zenobia's castle, and inherit his rightful kingship. And so it is done. Banya leaves to hide and Estrada starts taking care of the child. Here we will have a time jump of 14 years in the future. During this period, the sacred Zydogenian Empire will win the war, taking control of the entire continent. Ruling with an iron fist and much oppression, especially in the region of formerly Zenobia, many people will be killed and many more will become homeless, forced to live in poverty. The scenario was chaotic and getting worse with time. The citizens thought was that they would never have peace in their lives again. Until at one point an imposing creature in black armor appears in the region. His name was Balder. He said he was a prophet capable of creating a world without wars. Manipulative, he is able to bewitch people by promising their deepest desires. He takes advantage of the hopelessness of the oppressed at this time to seduce them, so a secret cult is formed around his image and attracts more and more followers. Balder is a creature from the underworld, the same place that demons and ogres came from, a realm where darkness blankets all in a complete void. There is no war, or pain, or joy, only emptiness. For Balder this meant true peace, so he seeks to bring his realm environment into this world as he saw it as the only way to solve reality's problems. For Balder, the real reason for the conflicts was the existence of humanity, 
so he will use his powers and influence to command, encourage and increase attacks by monsters, bandits, human trafficking and necromancy in the region, taking advantage of the decrease in security left with the departure of the Knights of the Kingdoms with the Dominion of the Empire, in order to reach its final objective. Fourteen years later, the Prince of Zenobia, Estrada is training Tristan in the art of the sword and also his other apprentice named Cain. Tristan and Cain grew up together and because of this they share a relationship like brothers. The three go to the city and see the suffering of the people who ask for someone to save them from the tyranny of the empire. At this moment a band of bandits starts attacking the region. Estrada had heard rumors of the increase in bandits attacking other villages as well, so he decides to resolve this issue and with Tristan and Cain they create the volunteer army, joining other local warriors to face the bandits and bring peace to the villagers. They successfully face off against the invading bandits and are cheered on by the civilians. Estrada says that Tristan and Cain are now true knights fighting for order and justice and they move on to help other villages. They arrive in a region that was being controlled by a bandit named Kazuma. After confronting his subordinates, they confront the bandit who shows that even though he was robbing the region, he and his henchmen were preventing monsters from entering the city and that his role was much greater in the event to come. At this moment Tristan is thoughtful about the duality that Kazuma's attitudes caused, but Estrada shows that this did not absolve him of the suffering he caused and confronts the bandit. Kazuma is defeated and killed and next to him was a woman. The woman introduces herself to them as Aquarius. Aquarius is a young nun with a strong sense of justice as well as naivety. She had voluntarily gone to meet the bandit in order to change his behavior and make him a good person. Tristan tries to convince her to join the army of volunteers, but Aquarius is saddened to see that the group uses force to settle things. Tristan says she must unite to become the moral compass that will guide the group in their decisions towards peace. Aquarius accepts and joins the group. Estrada becomes thoughtful about the real intentions of the thugs that Kazuma had spoken of. Kazuma had an exotic accent that Estrada recognized as being from the residents of the Northern Kingdom called Lyotfrost, so they decide to head there to look for more clues. On their way to Lyotfrost, they pass through the mountains where locals talk about a dangerous beast that is on the loose at night. The group decides to face the beast. They find the beast and after an arduous struggle, manage to subdue it. The beast is called Bakim and was one of Zenobia's warriors who fled the region when the Empire invaded. One day he encountered a werewolf and was infected with its virus, becoming one himself. He went into denial, went crazy with his new destiny, and decided to seclude himself in the mountains. Initially, the inhabitants of the mountains were helped by the force of Bakim who used it to ward off bandits, but over time they began to distrust him and attack him. Bakim asks to be killed by the group for being a beast, but Aquarius sees that he has a kind humanity and offers him to join the group and use his strength for good. Bakim accepts the opportunity and joins the army. The group reaches the Northern Kingdom and meets with King Lyotfrost and his rebellious daughter Nina. Estrada comments that one of the bandits attacking the villages was from Lyotfrost. The king is disappointed with this information and comments that invasions are happening everywhere. Even at this exact moment his castle was in confrontation with a violent bandit named Galen and that his military forces were not able to repel him. Nina says that she will solve this by herself by going to fight for her kingdom, but her father says that it is too dangerous and that she should stay at home. Tristan decides to help the king face his opponents. 
While organizing supplies for the volunteer troop, Cain discovers that Nina, the king's daughter, has escaped the castle and infiltrated the army. Nina convinces Tristan to accept her in the group and so they go against their opponents. Winning the conflicts, the group reaches Galen and manages to defeat the bandit and his henchmen. Estrada asks Galen who commanded him, and the adversary says that the necromancer Jenga who was on an island was the one controlling the invasions. With that clue they decide to go after the villain. On the way to the island mentioned by the bandit, they encounter many supernatural beings and undead, showing that they were heading in the right direction. Finally, they reach Jenga, who fights them with his powerful dark attacks. Jenga says that he commanded the bandits at the behest of Baldur, who would bring peace to this world by ending all wars. Tristan, Cain, and Estrada manage to defeat the Necromancer, but before he dies he casts one last spell towards the three of them. Estrada steps forward to protect the two and is mortally wounded. Cain and Tristan go to the knight, who hugs them with the last of his strength, asking Cain to protect Tristan in his place and for Tristan to find Banya so she can tell him about his true origins. The two mourn the death of their father figure and go after Banya, also thinking that they should find Baldur to avenge the death of their mentor. Three years later, a royal hope. With Estrada's death, Tristan is promoted to general in the volunteer army. They eventually find Banya and she reveals his past as Prince Tristan, rightful heir to the throne of the kingdom of Zenobia. Tristan decides to keep this information a secret from his troop while thinking about the meaning and importance of it for his life from now on. Tristan was determined to protect the people from Baldur's influence and also from the Empire's oppression. They arrive at a town and Tristan decides to speak with the villagers to learn their thoughts and regrets. Various complaints of the oppression and misery the Empire forced them to endure were common until Tristan meets Goldie, an apprentice mage who claims to be in debt and asks Tristan to help. He pays off the young woman's debt and she joins his group in gratitude. Residents comment that people were being kidnapped in the area and being taken to a nearby prison to the north. Aquarius says they must go there to save these people and Tristan agrees. But as he leaves town, he discovers that Baldur's followers have gathered at a nearby location called Megaholton. He couldn't miss this opportunity to get more information and decides to go there, despite Aquarius' regrets. On the way to Baldur's followers' base, Tristan encounters Yorkraif, another knight of Zenobia. With the death of the king and the defeat of the kingdom, he lost the motivation to live and the will to fight. When talking to Tristan, he recognizes the prince by his eyes and it fills his heart with determination. He joins the group in the hope of raising Zenobia again. They find Baldur's supporters who receive them very violently through their commander, the wizard Durham. Durham says that Baldur is the true savior of this land, that he would bring the peace that his realm, the underworld, had. Tristan then realizes that his opponent was a monster from the ogre realm and that's why he should be very strong. Durham is defeated and tells Tristan that Baldur was in Chagall swamps. So this would be the prince's next destination.
Arriving in the region, Yorkaif comments that a former commander of Zenobia lived nearby and that it would be useful to ask for his help. Tristan agrees and they meet Grant, the commander of Zenobia's mage division. Seeing Tristan's determination to protect the people from Baldur and the evil empire, Grant decides to help and joins the army. Looking for Baldur in the region, they end up finding Kiros, a war tiger who, unlike the werewolf knight Bakim, had accepted his fate and become a violent beast. Kiros is sadistic, evil, and loves to kill, so Tristan puts an end to the beast once and for all, for the good of the people of the region. At this point, Baldur appears and confronts Tristan with words, questioning if he would be willing to make the sacrifices necessary to achieve his desire. He shows that Zenobia's kingdom had been built with many wars and violence, and questions what peace he would be creating since all conflicts he resolved by force and killing people. Humanity lives only on wars and death. Should people be saved? Could this be the role of the Prince of Zenobia? Tristan is frightened by the creature knowing his origin and is doubtful about its actions, its feelings, and its goals. Baldur says that if he has the answer he can find him at Lake Lakeshore, accessible through a narrow passage through the forest. Tristan reflects on Baldur's words and begins to remember the people he knew who were suffering, looks at the troop of volunteers who were risking their lives alongside him for hope for a better world, looks at his stepbrother Cain who always supported him and remembers the words that his mentor, Estrada, once said to him. Peace is something that must be built, it is not something that comes by itself. Moreover, the hands that build peace are always bloodstained, but someone has to do it. Those with no strength will be forever oppressed. Never forget this. This fills his heart with determination and he decides to go ahead, face Baldur and save the world from the underworld monster. Tristan and his group head towards Lake Lakeshore, encountering several hideous and powerful creatures coming directly from the underworld along with Baldur. These mysterious creatures follow Baldur's ambitions to bring the void that blankets their own world to the surface world. Each of them makes similar claims about their home world having eternal peace through eternal nothingness. They look down on the surface world as riddled with chaos and conflict. With the forces of the volunteer army, they overcome the monsters and advance, reaching Baldur. Baldur asks Tristan if he truly believes this war-torn world is worth protecting. Tristan asks Baldur what he's really trying to say. Baldur elaborates that his home world has peace through complete darkness. No past, no future, no joy, no pain. Baldur then asks Tristan what it is he wishes for and offers to use his own powers to fulfill it. Tristan thinks about how he could defeat the Empire and bring peace if he had the power to do so, but soon realizes he would only be corrupting himself with evil and rejects Baldur's power. The Knight of Darkest then charges with all his might against the Prince, who faces him in an intense fight over a long period of time. The creature is finally vanquished when Tristan decides to accept the responsibility of his royal bloodline and dedicate his life to restoring peace to his homeland. Addressing the defeated Baldur, Tristan declares he won't give up on the world. He claims that if the world has indeed been thrown into chaos by humans, then humans can also put it back in order. Baldur concedes defeat and agrees to withdraw to his realm. 
However, he leaves Tristan with one last taunt. That human nature is the true source of darkness. With the threat of Balder neutralized, there would be no more raids by bandits and creatures he commanded in Zenobia, so Tristan disperses the volunteer army to prepare for their next move. Tristan confides in Cain that he wants to devote his life to fighting the Zydogenian Empire and bring peace back to their land. Though he's unsure of what he can truly accomplish, Cain encourages him and agrees to follow him all the way. Eight years later, epilogue. Tristan continues on his quest to bring down the empire. The prince hears that a rebellion had been formed and was managing to advance against the imperial forces. He decides to wait for the rebel leader in a mad, but learns that Duke Apros, a noble who betrayed his father during the great war was to be married. Tristan could not pass up the chance at revenge. The prince planned to use the crowds to his advantage in an assassination attempt. Luckily for him, before he could risk his life unnecessarily, he is found by Destin, introduces himself as Prince Tristan, heir to the royal throne of Zenobia, and joins the rebel army against the Empire. The rest of this story takes place in the game Ogre Battle The March of the Black Queen, I'll leave a card above for you to watch. And so ends the story of the game Legend of Ogre Battle Gaiden, Prince of Zenobia. Did you already know about the existence of this game? If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment, it helps us a lot here on YouTube. Thank you all and see you soon with more videos from the Ogre Battle Saga.